Thyrotoxicosis and thyromegaly are relatively uncommon in children but often present with diagnostic challenges which require care for evaluation and management. Thyrotoxicosis is a condition which is associated with increased levels of thyroid hormone and it should not be confused with the word which was earlier used as hyperthyroidism which actually means increased production of thyroid hormone. So thyrotoxicosis encompasses not only the common situation of what is known as Graves disease or increased production of uh, thyroid hormones but also condition of lymphocytic thyroiditis or subacute thyroiditis resulting in relief of preformed thyroid hormone into the circulation. So when do we suspect thyrotoxicosis in children and commonly when we talk about in general terms we talk about weight loss, palpitations and tremors. But often these features are not very common in children and we also see some rarer situations like periodic paralysis, diarrhea and fever without focus which can be the only clue to the diagnosis of thyrotoxicosis. So what really causes thyrotoxicosis and if you look at the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis, the two most common causes of uh, thyrotoxicosis in children are the uh, stimulation of the thyroid gland by the thyroid stimulatory immunoglobulin TSI in the setting of Graves disease or the damage of the thyroid gland by thyroid antibodies in the setting of thyroiditis. Distinguishing these two is extremely important because while antithyroid drugs to suppress thyroid treatment is required in the setting of Graves disease, it would not be required but actually be detrimental in individuals who have thyroiditis. So how do we distinguish between the two? The most important pointer is thyromegaly which is often soft and smooth and present in graves, usually absent in both subacute thyroiditis as well as lymphocytic thyroiditis. Eye signs are much more common in graves disease and usually absent in thyroiditis and the course of graves disease is an extremely progressive course while thyroiditis is usually a self-limiting condition. So we have this girl, 10 year old girl who has a large goiter as we can see and uh, we see that the FT4 level is high and TSH is low confirming the diagnosis of thyrotoxicosis. So what do we do in this regards? The most important thing to look at in thyroid uh, toxicosis is to actually look at thyroid scan and if the scan shows a diffuse increase in uptake whether it shows a focal increase or reduced uptake. Diffuse uptake is suggestive of Graves disease, while reduced uptake goes in favor of lymphocytic thyroiditis. And since Graves disease is the most common cause, we should think of pointers which go against the diagnosis of Graves disease, namely if there are no eye signs, there is no thyromegaly, and in fact, a male gender may also be a pointer against thyrotoxicosis and the possibility of looking at other possibilities in that regards. So what we did in this child was a scan which showed a reduced uptake confirming the diagnosis of lymphocytic thyroiditis. The condition usually resolves over three months. However, there is a reasonable risk of around 30 to 40 percent of development of hypothyroidism later in life. So how do we manage Graves disease? Depending upon the situation, if there is an acute crisis, then beta blockers would be helpful in improving sympathetic symptoms, tremors and tachycardia. In severe thyrotoxic storm, iodinated contrast and steroids would be efficacious. Medical management uh, includes the use of uh, antithyroid drugs methimazole or carbimazole but propylthiouracil is banned in children because of the risk of hepatotoxicity. Radioactive iodine is now clearly approved in children with Graves disease. Should be considered as a second line in the setting if there is no remission over a period of around two years. Surgery should be considered for children who have large goiter and have eye signs. So now we have a different setting of thyroid swelling. We have a 10 year old boy who presents to us with thyroid swelling. So what do we do from here? We need to look for things including size, consistency, compression and clinical course to decide about further outcome. So this is a grade three goiter, which is visible even with neutral position. It is firm in consistency, it is not causing any compressive symptoms and the child is clinically euthyroid. So what do we do in this setting? We look at the thyroid functions, we look at FT4 and TSH and we look at TPO which was negative. 
So goiter in children is a common condition. It usually resolves over time. Observation is the key to the diagnosis. There is no role of suppressive thyroxine or iodine treatment. It is, however, important to consider thyroxine if a child is DPO positive. In that situation, there is a risk of progression and treatment may be beneficial. Solitary thyroid nodules are uncommon in children but have a very high risk of malignancy. So we need to look at that at, with a really uh, word of caution. So we have this solitary nodule. You have to look at the progression, consistency, clinical features and mobility in this individual. It's usually a progressive disease, rapidly progressive. If it's hard, you thyroid and fixed nodule, the risk of malignancy becomes higher. So what do you do in this regards? If you have a solitary thyroid nodule, there's a 20% risk of malignancy in children. Ultrasolid guided IFNAC would be of help. There is no role of doing a scan. In setting, if you identify a tabulary carcinoma, surgery and ablative treatment should be considered. While if there is a medullary carcinoma, we have to work up for other rare associations like multiple endocrine neoplasias.